Hi everyone! So if you've watched my Perfume Empties video, you'll know that I've kept every single bottle that I've owned since my first purchase at the age of 15 and I keep them in these shoe boxes. So I found one of the boxes. I don't actually know how many I have <laughs> because I just fill them up and then put them away. So this one was originally in another shoe box, a Diana Ferrari shoe box, and the lid of the shoe box was deteriorating. So I've moved it into a newer shoe box. So in here we have full bottles. And then I can see that there are some little sample sizes at the bottom here. So the first one I want to talk about is YSL Yves Saint Laurent's Paris Eau de Parfum. My mother used to wear this and that's where I learned about this perfume. It's a 50ml and the bottle is very distinctive. I went to Myers YSL counter just to see if it was still available and yes it was and pretty much looks the same. This is a rose, sandalwood and vanilla fragrance. This particular shoe box, I believe, contains my perfumes, which are maybe 10 or more years old. So I'm just going to see how much it has degraded. You can see that there's a bit of browning. So I've done a good job of using up almost all the juice, but there's a little bit of browning at the bottom there. It still smells of what I remember it to smell like but there's nothing to spray out and I wouldn't even try because it really is quite old oh. but yes really a gorgeous classic Yves Saint Laurent Paris I according to Fragrantica it was launched in 1983 so it's I would in fact call this a classic and Similar to the Chanel Number no. 5, which I mentioned in another video, I do think that Yves Saint Laurent Paris is a must sniff for anyone on their fragrance journey. So clearly I was a big fan of Yves Saint Laurent Paris because I also picked up this 125ml Eau de Toilette, which is the Eau de... I don't know how you pronounce it, Printemps, which is the springtime fragrance. So in some years, they had a limited edition, which they released in the springtime, the European springtime. And I was lucky enough to get a hold of this limited edition one year because it's not currently available. So now it would be the European springtime, but I don't see any of this in the stores here in Brisbane. It might be that it's not available in Australia. And... So the bottle, they have different sort of patterns on it. And this one is a bit of a, you can see there's a bit of color, but it's not very strong. So it's like a light, light layer of color. It's gorgeous. And then you can see the Paris, Paris logo there. So again, there's nothing, <laughs> nothing left. I did a good job of spraying this one out. So definitely, I really loved it. Can, I can still smell some of that powderiness, but yes, gorgeous. And I'm keen to purchase another of the springtime limited editions if they ever produce one, if they ever produce another one. So yes, the YSL Paris Eau de Toilette, YSL Paris Eau de Parfum, these two are on my repurchase list. And I especially want to purchase if they ever reissue another springtime edition. Next is Joy by Jean Pateau, Paris. This is a 50ml Eau de Parfum. So Joy is one of the OGs, created in 1929 for the House of Pateau. And it's a rose and jasmine fragrance. And at one time, I think it was considered the most expensive in the world. 
due to the ingredients used. Looks like I did an excellent job of spraying this one out as well. And you can see there's a little bit of browning. Oh no, I haven't spread it all out. There's actually a little bit left. But yes, it's quite brown now. There's a bit of degradation to the top here. Okay. I can smell it still, but yeah, it is quite degraded. I don't recall thinking I love this so much. It was on my list because I went through a phase where I wanted to try every single perfume in the world. <laughs> and I'm still on that mission, but there's so many, so many, many perfumes in your releases every year. I will not be able to do it in this lifetime. But yes, I enjoyed it for its rose jasmine combination, which are two of my favorite notes. On the House of Fatu website, it says the fragrance is no longer in production. And I did a Google. There are still some bottles available online. And David Jones has it on their website, but it says it's out of stock. So if this is one that interests you, you are able to find it, I would say grab it. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem to be widely available anymore. Next up is J'adore by Dior. This was a release in 1999. Perfumer is Kellis Becker. It's still available at Dior. It's a bit of a classic, a bit of an icon. Its official notes are Ylang Ylang, Rose and Jasmine. But I also get a bit of Melon Aquatic from this one. The bottle is unique in the perfume world. There isn't one that I know of that is like this, with this lid. And I did quite a good job of <laughs> spraying this one out as well. There's a little, you can see there's a, little, a few drops left in that spray. It's a gorgeous bottle, feels really good in the hand. But I will say that the elongated lid makes it a bit awkward. There's your door in the top there makes it a little awkward and sometimes like if I put it in my luggage it will come off and that's how it looks with the lid off mm. I definitely smell the melon in this one even though it's not really listed it's not listed as a note on the Dior website I guess they only list what they consider the main notes so yes this was one i really enjoyed and yes i would consider repurchasing it this is very irresistible by Givenchy, the 2007 rose damascena limited edition i definitely love limited editions as you can tell particularly if it's rose so it says on the back here very irresistible Givenchy rose damascena 2007 so this is a rose patchouli fragrance. So I actually found it heavy and it's got a little bow here. <laughs> it was part of a trio of the 2007 Harvest limited edition that Givenchy released. It included Amarage and Organza. I only purchased one, the Very Irresistible. And you can see here, the there's a little bit of liquid left and it's turned that golden brown color, which I know means it's degraded. And when I purchased it, the liquid was sort of a light purple pink color and it came in a gorgeous black box with purple accents. So Very Irresistible itself is quite, for me, a heavy perfume. And this limited edition state true to that so it is for me a little bit rich but i must have enjoyed it <laughs> because it's almost all gone i really love the idea of limited editions where they use where they use certain years harvest i think it's a really great idea and i'll keep an eye out of if they'll they'll be doing this again although i probably wouldn't purchase very irresistible again i would look out for organza and amarich Next is the Body Shop's Satsuma. This isn't currently available and I really enjoyed this one. 
I really enjoy the body shop actually and they produce quite good quality scents for really affordable price so this is the Satsuma Clementine there's I can actually still smell it and it still has the price tag on it so this was a purchase from Malaysia RM is Ringgit Malaysia so that's um, at today's exchange rate probably around $15 Australian Yes, it still has that beautiful candy, orange kind of smell and I really enjoyed it and it's pretty good quality because it smells like how I remember it back in the day. So yes, this is one that I would purchase again if it was reissued. It's the Eau de Toilette in the 30 mil. Next is Rose Water by Crabtree and Evelyn. So Crabtree and Evelyn don't really exist anymore from what I can tell. I think they were bought out or maybe they've gone bankrupt, which is a shame because they produced such beautiful scents, including this one. So this one is the Eau de Toilette 30 ml. And I can still smell that sweet powderiness. So it was a really beautiful scent and I sprayed it almost all out except for that little bit at the bottom there which has dried into that dirty brown color. So Crepture and Evelyn, I don't know what the plans are for the brand but if they do ever come back, I would definitely be purchasing, repurchasing this one. This one is Dior Attic to Life. It was a short release, so I don't see it online or in the stores anymore it's a lighter fresher take on Dior Attic which I find quite heavy so I find Dior Attic the original more suited to really cold climates and it's good that they went for a lighter version which could be used for summer or in the more tropical hotter climates so this one has this interesting spray section and it's not fully, it's not a top that you can remove. So this part is not removable. Then you can see here the CD, Christine Dior. And then at the bottom, it says Dior Addict to Life. This was a raspberry, rose, musky fragrance. And if they reissue it, I would have another sniff. And it would be a serious contender if it smells the same as it did when I purchased it. I would really reconsider. <laughs> so I obviously really loved it. There's not a whole lot. And then that's that dirty brown color. And I really love this sort of pale metallic lilac that they chose for the bottle's top. Next we have Estee Lauder's Pleasures in Bloom. So this was a reinterpretation of pleasures and it was meant to be a fruity floral version of the rather floral watery pleasures and I do have the original pleasures because that was part of my Estee Lauder journey I don't consider the pleasures line to be OG in terms of perfumery but I thought this is a very cool idea that they had to reinterpret one of their best sellers to kind of capture a little bit of a younger market. So when I bought it, there was a bloom, like a flower around the top here, and that's long gone. It probably fell off or got in the way of me spraying it. This is the Eau de Parfum spray in 30 ml. See, let's see if I can smell anything left in this bottle. Yes, it's gone kind of powdery, so it's not anywhere near the original smell. And yeah, I'm going through a phase where I might start doing nostalgia purchases <laughs> or nostalgia repurchases. Uh, there are definitely a few while I've been opening these boxes where I've thought, actually, I wouldn't mind having that back in my current collection. Um, if it smells as I remember it, I'm not sure about pleasures, but it's definitely one which I would consider. Next is one by L'Occitane, Fleur d'Or and Acacia. This is a citrus floral, 
with notes of lemon and mimosa. So that sort of covers a couple of my favorite notes being citrus and florals. So let's give it a sniff and see what I can still smell from this bottle. Mmm. Wow. So that actually smells really good still. It has this lovely... It's a little sweet. And definitely floral. I don't smell much of the citrus anymore, so we will probably be getting the dry down. The quite degraded dry down. You can see the brown in the spray tube there. I actually would consider repurchasing this. So this was part of Los Etans La Collections de Grasse, which was a 2013 collection. And I look forward to if L'Occitane released something like this or similar because I really enjoyed this fragrance. And I really love this rectangular bottle and it's quite a nice weight in my hand. Next one is Velvet Rose by Sonoma Stent Studio. So Sonoma Stent Studio is a small batch artisan perfumery based in California. And I don't recall where I heard about them, but they're definitely not, they were not sold in store here in Australia. So I would have purchased it online. And I remember there was one which I really loved, but I don't think it's in this particular box because I still think about that one. And this one, Velvet Rose is a, it's a lovely rose and there's like a undercurrent of pepperiness so the bowl is quite old and yeah it's um the spray part is a little stuck there but i can still smell yes it's quite lovely it's nice and warm yes yeah, really quite lovely i will take a look at their website and see what their delivery options are like to Brisbane. I'd like to support them as it's rare to find artisan perfumery sort of doing it on their own without support of the major corporations. And now we have the Body Shops Japanese Cherry Blossom or the Telet 50ml. This is one of the fragrances of the world collection that the Body Shop had in 20. 12, though I'm not sure if this was released around that time or it was part of a later series. It's old, so the spray part has detached. See? And um, yeah. It can still smell a little bit of the sweetness. Hmm. It's quite nice actually. It's um light, sweet, not too sweet, and probably why I ended up buying this one, why I liked it so much. There's not a whole lot left. There's not, whoops. There's not much left at all except for a little bit in the spray tube, which hasn't really degraded that much from the color. I would consider buying this again. I do like the Body Shops range of fragrances. They just don't have all their fragrances available at the same time. They seem to go through phases of issuing some and then reissuing them a few years later down the track. Might be to do with availability of ingredients. Next is Moroccan Rose by The Body Shop, 50ml Eau de Toilette. So you can see the love of rose is pretty prevalent in this box. And uh, this rose was a rose citrus vanilla so it really was quite yum and again it's one of those from the body shop that had a limited release Let's see if this i can smell anything i do smell a very slight powderiness but not much of the original scent and definitely I would consider purchasing. I do love the whole knowing which region of the world the ingredients came from. And the last of the Body Shop fragrances in this box is Dreams Unlimited. I have the Eau de Parfum 30ml. This was a 
floral fruity fragrance so there were notes of blackcurrant orange and a woody base so this one is one of those that retains the actual smell so let's have a sniff mmm yes this is really good really love the light sweetness of it beautiful and it hasn't really degraded you can't see any of that dirty brown in there so yes this i would repurchase if the body shop ever reissued it now since the box is quite old i am not surprised that there are scents in here which i have no no recollection of what they actually smell like or how i purchased them i have no memory of using them and one of them is Nature Woman or the Toilet? No idea. Well, let's see if there's anything left. No, it just smells a bit off, I guess, because of the age. So, no, Nature still produce fragrances. They're not really on my list of brands to buy fragrances from at the moment, but that might change in the future. And the other one I don't have much recollection of is intoxicating Davana Blossom or the Parfum 50ml from Molten Brown. I do like this range. I have had, I have good memories of some of their other fragrances, but I don't recall this one at all. There is still a scent. Oops. <laughs> roll, roll, roll. Stop. <laughs> It actually smells a little bit coconutty, and I, from memory, I believe Davana might be a flower of Indian origin, so maybe that sort of was one of the ingredients. And here we have the sample sizes I have in this box. Now this lot, these four over here, were from a Fleurs range by Kenzo. So Eau de Fleur de Soy Silk and Eau de Fleur Magnolia. I don't recall at all what any of these smell like. <laughs> so that's that. And then we have Fracas by Robert Piguet. Again, no clue don't recall at all what this smelled like and here are a couple of chanel chanel number five or the toilet which is that powdery aldehyde classic by chanel i have a review of the eau de parfum and this is the chanel coco manuzel it's a bit faded i'm I don't recall much about this, so probably because I didn't like it. I believe from memory, it's a little heavy for me. And then we have here Gucci. Gucci, Flora. And another one, which I don't recall at all what it smelled like. And this one, oh my god. This one I loved so much. It's APOM by my son Francisco John. Unfortunately, a poem was discontinued in 2019, so I've missed it by a few years. But I remember this one so much, and I remember thinking I must absolutely buy it when I've got the chance. It's deteriorated quite a bit. It's a, it was a citrus woody floral, and there was something about it which just, it just radiated so much joy for me. This fragrance, and but I think at the time. Oh, it was a long time ago and probably my decision making was that I couldn't really afford to buy my son Francis Crutjan's full bottles so yeah it makes me sad that I missed out on this one and if anybody's listening from MFK please reconsider <laughs> reissuing this one because it really was incredible so that was this box of empties I really enjoyed going down memory lane with some of these and definitely super keen to maybe start my nostalgia repurchases i really enjoyed picking up these bottles again <laughs> makes me so happy to see them and 
that's why I kept them for all this time. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you being here. And if this is something that you enjoy, if you got this far in the video, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.